Special Ops or Special Operations is a secretive realm of the U.S. military. These elite units operate outside of conventional warfare all around the world. The Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Force each have a Special Operations Command. Fort Liberty in North Carolina is the home of Army Special Operations, the famous Green Berets. Army Special Operations Command directs over 32,000 military personnel, and many call Fort Liberty home. The base is also where the best of the best try out and then train to become a Green Beret. Today, I'm at Fort Liberty to go deep with the Green Berets and learn about the role Special Forces have played in United States military history. Hey, Remy, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, General. Welcome to Fort Liberty. My first stop is to meet with Major General Patrick Roberson, the Deputy Commanding General of U.S. Army Special Operations Command, to get the lay of the land. Tell me about the history of Fort Liberty. Was it, was it always Fort Liberty? No, it was Fort Bragg and became Fort Liberty. This has been a base since World War I. And then in the 1950s, that is when the Army uh, has decided, hey, Special Forces, this is something that we need. They built Special Forces here. This is the origin point. U.S. Army Special Forces, the Green Berets, they can trace their history back to World War II in something called the OSS, or Office of Strategic Services. In 1941, we're on the verge of entering World War II, but we're very unprepared for the war. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The major powers are warring. Germany at this point has utilized special operations forces very successfully and incorporated them into their blitzkrieg tactics and have overrun most of Europe and they're pressing into Russia. Things are very, very grim for the Allies in, in 1941. U.S. Special Operations Forces don't exist at all. President Roosevelt designates William J. Donovan to become the director of something called the Coordinator of Information. Donovan is one of the most decorated soldiers in World War I. He really sees the need for another way of war. And what he is doing is tapping into something that is in American DNA, and that is unconventional warfare. Going all the way back to the origins of the United States, it's something that follows through with Francis Marion in the Revolutionary War, the light infantry in Washington's army. Donovan understands that we have a past of unconventional warfare and wants to tap into that. The ideal candidate for an OSS person would be a PhD that could win a bar fight. Somebody that was uber smart, but incredibly tough. They took people from all walks of life, American life as well as foreigners, remarkable individuals that, that changed the course of World War II. In 1944, it's a titanic struggle across the globe. 160,000 plus troops, large numbers of planes, paratroopers are all directed at Normandy. This is the greatest invasion in history, D-Day. But a critical component to this is the OSS's Operation Jedburg. The Jedburgs were very small teams, two, three, or four in each team, who were uh, parachuted into occupied Europe on the eve of D-Day to link up with the resistance fighters in France and in the Low Countries. Each team had maybe three nationalities. 
an OSS member from the United States, a British member of the Special Operations Executive, and then a member of the French or the Dutch or the Belgian resistance. Their mission was basically to attack German lines of communication, drawing a large number of German troops to try to find them and eliminate them, which meant that those German forces were not available on the front line. And they are causing chaos behind the lines, derailing trains, providing intelligence, tying up large numbers of German forces. It was an important mission, but it was carried out by very few people. The total number of Jedbergs was, I think, about 300. Their mission was essentially over within three months because all of the uh, territory in which they were operating had been overrun by the Allied invasion force. After the war, these men are the heart of what becomes the Central Intelligence Agency as well as Special Forces. You know, after World War II, a lot of these units, like the OSS, kind of divided, it became part of the CIA. Then during Korea, during the Cold War, noted that, hey, we need a force that's capable of doing unconventional things, deep raids, direct action missions. We need to build back a permanent Army Special Operations Force. I mean, we're out there competing every day with our adversaries around the world. At any, any given time in this command, probably between three and 5,000 members of the command are deployed forward 70 to 80 different countries. Yeah. Since their founding, Green Berets have taken on any fight, no matter how unconventional. And I've seen up close that there's no better place than Fort Liberty to select, train, and deploy these elite soldiers.